Hello, everyone, and welcome to Discovery Festival 2021. My apologies. I didn't realize that the video wasn't sharing sound until just now. It was just a fun musical interlogue anyway. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Again, I'm so sorry for that. Um, welcome students and teachers. We're so excited to have you here. My name is Jessica Sosa. I'm with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central New Mexico. And this afternoon, we're so excited to have Nina and Kaylee from ASU to talk more with us about engineering and technology. I will pass it over to you, Nina. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting us this afternoon. We're really excited to share some information about what Arizona State University has um, to offer you, but more specifically along the lines of engineering and technology. So give me one moment here and I will share my screen. We have some uh, good information for you this afternoon. Now, something that hopefully you um, was made available to you is an interactive worksheet in which you can um, participate along with our presentation today. Um, so it's just a chance for you to answer some questions that pertain to the information we're sharing with you. And if you send the information to us in an email to fultonschools at asu.edu, we will send you a nice little gift item here from the Fulton Schools of Engineering. So if you don't have access to that, we'll see if we can get that to you um, in our chat. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. So hopefully everyone can see that okay. All right, so welcome once again. My name is Nina Lohman and I am a coordinator here with the Fulton Schools of Engineering here at Arizona State University. So one of the things I enjoy most about my job is just getting to connect with prospective students and teachers and parents and share with them some more information about what the Fulton Schools of Engineering have to offer. So I'm going to say Fulton Schools a lot today. Um, and what that means is that's the name of our college. So the way things are organized here at ASU is ASU is the university and the Fulton Schools of Engineering we're the college that houses all of the engineering programs, as well as a majority of the technology programs. So that's what I mean when I say Fulton Schools. And so really the point of today is just to share with you some information um, about what engineering looks like here at ASU, the different opportunities you would have as a student, and ways that you can uh, get one step closer to joining us if you do want to come here after high school. So with that, let's just jump right in. So we want to start here with a map because it's just really helpful to uh, conceptualize ASU is actually not just one location. Many people think of ASU as just a campus, but in fact, we have four different campuses that spread across the Phoenix metro area. Now, within the world of engineering and technology, our majors are located on two of ASU's four campuses. So some of your degrees would be located at our Tempe campus, which is in the heart of Tempe, Arizona. And then some of our other engineering and technology degrees are offered at the Polytechnic campus, which is in East Mesa. So a frame of reference, those two campuses are about 45 minutes apart from one another. And the campus is specific to the degree that you choose to pursue. So the degree that um, you pursue is located either at Tempe or at Poly, not at both. Now, that being said, we do really encourage students um, that attend ASU to travel across those four different campuses. You're a student within ASU everywhere, and you're a student within the Fulton schools, especially on those two different campuses. One of the things we have, um, we offer a free intercampus shuttle that runs across all of them so that you can travel around and get a good a sense of what the campuses are like, but also get around the Phoenix metro area. So as we talk a little bit more about the different majors you can choose from, we'll circle back to this conversation about campus because it's a really nice thing that you have by coming to a large university is the choice of finding the campus that really fits well for you. Our Tempe campus is very large, fast-paced, urban, whereas our Polytechnic campus is a smaller campus, more intimate class sizes, a little bit more of a desert atmosphere. So um, if we've been known to see some javelina walking around that campus, um, all kinds of fun animals like roadrunners and you name it. So you have that nice chance to, to find a campus that feels good to you. So, um, just a couple of highlights before we jump into the specifics. The Fulton Schools of Engineering, we are the largest engineering college in the country. 
and we are considered the most comprehensive because what we do is we take kind of core engineering and technology realms and then we break them down into more specific degree offerings. So as a student, you have a choice of 25 different majors to choose from. So that gives you a lot of choice and flexibility in finding the major that really fits your specific interests. Now on the screen, you'll also see quite a number of other statistics. In the center, we have some of our student demographic statistics. So we are very proud of our diversity here within the Fulton schools. Um, we are number six for women as tenure and tenure track faculty. Um, and you can see our underrepresented student statistics as well as our international enrollment. So one of the things we are um, really prideful of is our diversity because it helps propel some innovative thinking, especially within engineering and technology. Now, when you're looking at some of the other statistics on the right side of the screen, one thing I like to point out is our research expenditures. So ASU is considered a tier one research university, which means we put in a considerable amount of funding into doing innovative research at all levels of the university, including undergraduate students. So something that you can join and be part of if you come to ASU in Fulton is to do research as an undergraduate. So you don't have to wait until you are doing your master's or your PhD. You can get involved in research as early as your freshman year. We have a program dedicated to that. It's called the Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiative, FURY for short. Um, and so it's a really great opportunity for students to pair up with a professor, write a research proposal with that professor, and then do the research. And the nice thing is that you get some funding to conduct that research and it culminates in a symposium at the end of each semester. So you also then have the experience of creating a professional research uh, poster and presenting your findings to a group. So that is really one of our kind of shining star programs here that really highlights um, kind of the difference that Fulton is making in terms of research and student opportunities. Now we are also very proud to note that recently five of our undergraduate programs were ranked within the top 25 of undergrad undergraduate programs according to US News and World Report. So we are um, highly recognized here across the country for some of our engineering and technology programs. I do encourage you to take a look at some of those top five specifically. Now we'll jump into more of what those different options are here in just a moment. So I like to kind of highlight our, our student side of things just because it's really helpful to see yourself here within the Fulton schools when you know what you're becoming a part of. I mentioned we're the largest engineering college in the country. And so we have close to 27,000 students just within our college. Now don't let that number scare you. That is undergraduate students as well as graduate students. We're spread across those two different campuses I mentioned and a number of students do their degree entirely online. So our first year freshman group that we bring in each year is a group of about 3,500 students. And do remember that is spread on those two campuses with Tempe taking a larger share than our Polytechnic campus. Now, one of the things we also do to help support our students and make that community feel even smaller before they step foot on campus is inviting them to a summer camp the summer before they would join us in the fall. So our first year students are invited to what we call E2 engineering experience. It's a summer camp um, up north here in Arizona to escape the heat, but also get a chance to meet uh, other first year students within Fulton, get a chance to meet some professors, meet uh, some of your advising team. So it's a great chance to develop that community before you even step foot on the campus. Now, this is all the fun stuff. So when we think about what is offered here within the Fulton Schools of Engineering, this graphic is a really helpful way of describing the different degree programs we offer. I mentioned that we offer 25 undergraduate programs. And so what we do is we divide those into seven schools of engineering. And you'll see the names across the center here. For the most part, the schools are thematic. So we take similar engineering and technology disciplines that have some commonalities and we group them together in a school. So the nice thing about this structure is that as a student, you belong to a school within our college 
within the university. So it's a kind of layering on um, these smaller layers of community as you get more involved in the university. So let's take a look at what some of our offerings are. On the left, we have the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering. Now that school is home to biomedical engineering, which is increasingly a popular field that blends engineering with the, phys the medical sciences and physiology. So if you are considering perhaps going into the medical route, biomedical engineering is a really um, awesome path that you can use to put you on that path. Now going kind of to the next one here, we have our School of Computing and Augmented Intelligence in Gold. And that is the school that houses all of our computer science and technology programs related to computing. So when you think of the name, the Fulton Schools of Engineering, it's not just engineering. We have computer science and we have technology within our college as well. So you can see that we have um, quite a few different offerings related to computer science. We have computer science. We also have computer systems engineering. We have informatics and we have software engineering. Then on more of the process side of things, we offer industrial engineering and engineering management. So if you find yourself in the Sky School, we call it Sky for short, um, you've got quite a choice here of computing programs as well as some of our more process oriented programs. Our School of Sustainable Engineering in the Built Environment in green, that is home to civil engineering, construction engineering, construction management, and environmental engineering. So this is a really cutting edge school that is blending construction with environmental engineering to think more about the sustainable future of our um, engineering developments. Now, this one is on that worksheet if you're following along. Our School for Engineering of Matter, Transport, and Energy, SEMPTI for short, um, we, this is home to aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, and materials science and engineering. So within this school, you have those four different options as an, as an undergraduate student. Some of our very popular programs are in our SEMPTI school. Now, working on to that school in purple, our School of Electrical, Computer, and Energy Engineering is home to electrical engineering. Now, these five schools we've just covered, those are all located at our Tempe campus. So if you find yourself pursuing one of those degrees, the Tempe campus would be your home. So all of the classes you would need to take um, and the residential hall you would live in would be located at the Tempe campus. Now, our two schools here on the right that we have yet to cover, those are located at our Polytechnic campus, the one in Mesa that I had mentioned. So our School of Manufacturing Systems and Networks is brand new, and that is home to the um, propellingly new field of manufacturing engineering, which as we've seen kind of in light of um, the COVID-19 pandemic and some supply chain disruptions, manufacturing engineering is a critical field that is growing in popularity. Now the last school to cover is our Polytechnic School, which is home to quite a diverse set of different programs to pursue. We have a generalized engineering degree there in which you can specify in electrical systems or mechanical systems or robotics or even automotive engineering. Um, also at that campus is our aviation programs, which this campus is located right next to an airport. And so those aviation programs pair very nicely because our students walk across the street to do some of their flight training at that airport. So that's how you read this infographic. And we have a wealth of information on our websites about our different schools and about all of these programs in case you want to learn more. And we'll talk about some of those resources here in just a moment. Now I wanna talk briefly about applying to ASU while we're on this screen. So if you do choose to come to ASU on the application itself, you apply to the major that you want to do. It's not a general um, application. You're actually applying to the degree that you want to pursue, which a lot of power kind of comes that great responsibility of knowing what it is that you would like to select. That being said, we know that's kind of a challenging decision for students to know exactly what they want to study before they even get to the university. We know that we're here to help you coach through that decision. And for the first year of our programs, 
they are similar enough where if you begin in one program and you change your mind into another, it's usually not going to delay your graduation timeline too much because that first year is developing that common set of core curriculum um, and expectations for all of our engineering and technology students. Now back to that application, you do select the major and it is important to note that some of our majors or some of our degree programs do have slightly higher admissions criteria than the general university requirements. So that means a slightly higher SAT or ACT score and having no deficiencies in your math or science coursework in high school. So when in doubt, I really recommend taking a look at the specific major you're interested in and their admissions criteria just to make sure you know what you're working towards. Now, don't forget, if you have any questions at all, you can feel free um, to put them in the Q&A or the chat and we can help field those as they come in. So I've hit you with a ton of information already. So you might be asking yourself, oh my goodness, how in the world am I supposed to choose what path is right for me? There's a lot within engineering and technology. There's quite a few different ways you can go. So what we recommend is not to start by asking what major you should do because often that's limited to what majors you know exist or what disciplines you know exist. Rather, we encourage you to ask yourself a series of questions that might open up new possibilities you haven't yet considered. Ask yourself questions like, what types of problems do you like to solve? Beginning with what you're passionate about and what you're motivated in can find a path that pairs well. So for example, if you really care a lot about increasing water um, accessibility or water quality, that's a really awesome thing to be passionate about. And working your way backwards, you might find that environmental engineering is a good fit or civil engineering or perhaps mechanical engineering even. So asking yourself the types of problems you're interested and motivated to solve and then working backwards is something we typically recommend. Now, you can also ask yourself questions more on the skills side. If you are really interested in programming or coding, then work backwards and see which programs include a lot of those components. Um, similarly, some of our engineering and technology degrees are more focused on the physics side of things, whereas others are more focused on the chemistry side of things. So asking yourself what courses you enjoy in high school can also help direct you to which majors might be a good fit for you. Then thinking kind of bigger picture perspective, if you want something that's more management oriented or you know you're motivated by business or entrepreneurship, some of our degree programs are more closely aligned with that, such as engineering management or technological entrepreneurship and management. It's a mouthful, but it's a really cool program at our Polytechnic campus. And speaking of, if you do choose to come to ASU, don't forget to ask yourself that campus preference question. That is a really important one to consider because where you end up for college, um, you wanna find a good fit for you. So asking yourself all those questions can help lead you down the right path and know that we're here to support you. We have a lot of resources out there that are very valuable. One of which being we have videos for every single major we offer here within the Fulton Schools of Engineering that you can watch and get a better sense for what they actually are. Now my favorite and one I encourage for all students to look at is called the major map. This is a document that lists all the classes you would take in a degree and the order in which you take them. So you can see on a class level what it is that an electrical engineering student does. Um, that's a really powerful document because if you're deciding between two different majors, you can sit those major maps right next to one another and get a better sense for what it actually entails to do that degree program. And you'll notice that those major maps are set up for you to complete your degree in four years. So that's the plan coming in as we've structured it for the degrees to be completed in four years. Some students finish them a little bit earlier, some students um, go a little bit past but that's how that major map is set up. And that's something that your academic advisor will work with you on during your time here at ASU is to check those boxes on your major map as you complete your coursework. Now, another um, thing I do wanna point out is that we run a summer camp every year for rising juniors and rising seniors in high school, where we invite you onto our Tempe campus to live in um, one of our residential halls we'll talk about soon. and 
see ASU for a whole week and explore all of those different engineering programs for a whole week, which is a really powerful summer camp to help you shape that decision about what you might want to do when you come to ASU. And last but certainly not least, we have a whole team of students that are currently in our engineering and technology majors that like to volunteer with high school students. They're called our Fulton Ambassadors, and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment with them. So that way you can get a better sense from the student's perspective. How do they pick their degree? What do they like about it? What programs are they involved in? So you can get more of that lived experience, which is very helpful in shaping what it is you might want to do when you get to college. So to recap what we've covered so far and kind of introduce a new set of topics, coming to ASU is really, in my opinion, the best of both worlds. You're getting the resources of a very large public institution, but as you get more involved at different layers, you're adding in an additional sense of community. So you're taking what could feel very large and overwhelming and make it feel small in a close-knit community. For example, when you um, are admitted into a Fulton Schools program, you're automatically part of our Fulton Schools community, which, smaller sense, gives in additional resources. Within our Fulton Schools, you have access to tutoring centers specific to engineering and technology because we're here to support you and we know that these are challenging degree programs and tutoring is a very critical resource. Additionally, we have a career center that's open to our Fulton School students, again, specific to engineering and technology, and they host a number of different opportunities for our students, one of which being career fairs that we offer twice a year that bring in hundreds of employers related to engineering and technology so that our students can network with them. And so we'll talk a little bit more about career services here in just a moment. Now, like we mentioned, the Fulton schools are divided into those seven schools of engineering we discussed. And so that would really be your home within our college, within the university. So your smaller sense of community, but then it gives, again, additional resources that are specific to that branch of engineering or technology that you find yourself in. Oftentimes those schools um, will run other support systems for their students or specific career fairs related to those few disciplines in their school. So again, like I mentioned, it's really the best of both worlds. So thinking about what you wanna do in college is not just about choosing your major and what resources are available, but thinking about the other fun opportunities that you can get involved in. So I would really encourage you to take a look at this website, our customized engineering website, because this is a full list of the different student organizations, clubs, mentoring, uh, societies, you name it, that we have going on in the Fulton schools. So I'll name just a few of my favorites um, just to get you interested. We have uh, an elective course that we offer for our students. It's called EPICS. It stands for Engineering Projects in Community Service. And it's a one credit hour elective you can take every semester if you want. And it's a chance for students to be put on a team of other engineering students and they're paired with a real community partner doing some engineering work in the real community. So for example, um, one of our community partners is the Phoenix Zoo and our students are designing a mister system for the reptiles. So the students on that team are getting some hands-on engineering work with a real community partner. And it's a good chance to develop those more entrepreneurial skills of how do you speak with a customer? How do you better understand their needs so that you can design it with their desires in mind? Um, so that's just one example. We have rocketry associations. We have a society of automotive engineers that design and build and race Formula One race cars. So there's quite a lot out there to get involved in. I do encourage you to take a look at what inspires you. I promise we'd come back to career support because this is a big one. Our Fulton Schools of Engineering Career Center does a lot with our students from day one. So this career center is not just reserved for upperclassmen like juniors and seniors. You can engage with our career center as early as your freshman year. 
And so they do things like scheduling one-on-one -on -one career peer mentor appointments. Well, they'll look at your resume and your cover letter and strategize with you what companies might align with your engineering discipline. We have those career fairs that I mentioned a little bit earlier that we do twice a year. And you can see some of our featured employers here on the screen. So these are employers that we've already established a deep relationship with, um, but by all means, this is not an extensive list. So if you were to look at our Career Center website, you can get the full extensive list of the employers that have attended various different workshops or career fairs with us. And ultimately, this support pays off. 81% of our students that were looking for a job got one within 90 days of graduation. So we're very proud of this support network um, because it does pay off. And so if you have questions more related to this, we're happy to help answer them by putting them in the Q&A or the chat. Now, something else to consider um, when you are attending a ASU, something you have to think about is whether you want to live on campus or not. So we really do encourage and expect first year students to live on campus their first year. And it's especially helpful for engineering and technology students because your degree is challenging. And if you live on campus, you're more likely to go to the tutoring centers. You're more likely to go visit the career center. You're more likely to form those study groups with your peers that will help you persist in a challenging program. And the, the way it's structured here is again to support you because our residential halls are specific to the college. So our first year students begin registering for housing at the Tempe campus in a building we call the Tooker House. And our first year engineering students at our Polytechnic campus register for housing in a building called the Century Hall. Both of these, um, you can take a look at the floor plans on our website and we do have a virtual tour of them so you can get a sense for what that looks like. But these residential halls are for our first year students. So you get a chance to live with students within the Fulton schools and develop that deeper peer network, which is very helpful for student success. Plus it's fun. Now, one of the things that breaks this rule is if you choose to be part of our honors college. So at ASU, you have the op option to join what's called Barrett, the honors college. So it's an honors experience that you would add on to your degree at ASU. The reason I bring that up now is that if you do choose to be part of Barrett, the honors college, you would live in the Barrett residential hall rather than the two that you see here on the screen. But fun fact, over one quarter of the students in Barrett, the Honors College belong to the Fulton schools. So you do have quite a deep engineering and technology peer group there, so much so that you can choose to live on an engineering floor within the Barrett Hall. So again, kind of best of both worlds. Speaking of Barrett, we get this asked this question a lot is really what's the, the synthesis between being an engineering student and joining the Honors College. So this is an option for our students and you can apply to be part of Barrett your freshman year, but you can also apply at a later date, say your sophomore year, if you decide after the fact that you do want to have that honors experience. So if you join the Honors College, like I mentioned, you have a lot of engineering and technology peers there. 27% of our Barrett students are also engineering students. And one of the nice benefits here of doing this honors um, kind of cur curriculum is that you're deepening your portfolio and your skill set as an engineer and as a technologist. So you're learning analytical reasoning skills and critical reasoning skills in a different way than engineers would, would naturally do. It's also going to develop that kind of unique skill set of public speaking um, and uh, kind of that broader sense of engineering rather than just the technical side. Um, you also get the nice bonus of having priority class registration if you are part of Barrett the Honors College. So just another little perk of, of joining that Honors College. Now, if you do want to learn more, Barrett routinely does informational sessions about how that curriculum is structured um, and what it takes to apply. So if you are interested in learning more, we can definitely point you to those resources as well. We have two more big topics to cover, one of which is scholarships. So at ASU, after you have applied to the Fulton Schools of Engineering and then been admitted into an engineering program, 
you would then have access to Fulton specific scholarships. Now, one of the nice things for all of our seniors out there in the audience is that that engineering scholarship portal is currently open. It opened on November 1st. So if you have yet to apply to ASU and you're thinking about doing engineering, I recommend doing so. So that way you can jump in and take a look at these engineering scholarships before they close because the deadline is February 1st, which does sneak up on some of our seniors because you're out of the holidays, you're enjoying your senior year, and then February rolls around and you realize, oh my gosh, I missed some scholarships. So don't miss out on those scholarship listings within our Fulton portal. Now, to note, you will um, uh, likely have to complete the FAFSA for many scholarships within and, and external to Fulton. So if you have not yet done so, the FAFSA, we would encourage you to do so. And then if you have questions, we have our contact information for our Fulton Scholarship Office here down at the screen um, so that way you can reach out and ask those more specific one-on-one -on -one questions. All right, last but certainly not least, we um, this is quite an involved infographic, so I'm actually going to work backwards here. It's going to make a little more sense. So if you choose to come to ASU and do engineering here with us at the Fulton Schools, you also have the option of doing your master's degree at an accelerated rate. So something we offer for all of our engineering and technology majors is the ability to do your master's degree in one year instead of the traditional two years. And so this is a chance for you to get that additional education, that additional criteria in a shorter period of time. So if you're interested in learning more about how that all works, I definitely recommend taking a look at our accelerated website. But for short, you don't need to decide right now. Um, students that do want to be part of our plus one program apply the equivalent of their junior year of college. So it's not something you need to worry about just now, but know that it's an option for you, that you can do that advanced degree in a shorter period of time. Now, what you're doing in high school can also directly impact that trajectory. So some students that bring in credits from high school, such as AP credits, IB, maybe dual enrollment credits, those students may be working on that major map we talked about earlier on and satisfying some of those credits before even attending the university. So much so that some of those students can do graduate with their undergraduate in one or sorry, three years and then still do that plus one. So you're getting two degrees in four years. And that being said, that plus one is open as well if you do it the regular pace at four plus one. But knowing what you're doing in high school can accelerate your path even more. Now, if you would like to explore accelerating your path through ASU, you can enroll in what we call EFT. It's the Engineering Fast Track. So these are online classes you can take as a high school student here with the university. It's a chance for you to get that college level credit before coming and skipping the middleman because you know it's going to translate to ASU here. Now those programs, um, they do often offer the classes in the line of our semesters. So um, many of them have a start date that would begin in January. So if you're interested in doing one of those EFT classes, I would encourage you also to take a look at our accelerated website to learn what classes are available and what start dates. And the nice thing about these is that it's really low risk. So you would pay $25 to take the course and if you don't finish the course or you don't earn a grade that you like, there's really no harm done. It doesn't follow you. It doesn't haunt you forever. You've gained the experience of a college level class. But if you do complete the class and you are happy with your grade, you can choose to pay the course fee. So this is after you've completed the class. And that course fee then applies that credit to your ASU transcript. So that's another way if you want to accelerate your time with us that you can do so. Now that is a ton of information that I've just shared with you. So know that we are here and happy to help answer any questions that you have. I would encourage you um, to email them to the Fulton schools at asu.edu. But we are also here and happy to answer questions now as they roll in. So between um, myself and Kaylee Graham, we will help answer those questions for you. So Kaylee, do we have any that I can kick off right now? Yes. Um, so the first question that we have in the chat uh, that we haven't addressed yet 
um, is a student um, named David who's asking if there are any sports programs or intramurals at ASU. That's a great question. So I, I'll chime in and then Kaylee, if you have other things you'd like to add, absolutely. Um, so ASU does have a lot. Intramurals is a nice chance for you to do um, sports, but at a non-competitive kind of realm, it's more for fun and meeting new people around the university. So for example, long time ago, I myself did intramural sports um, at ASU. I played flag football and it was a lot of fun. So that's an option that you can do if you want to uh, join with a group of friends and you already have a team, or you can do what I did, which I signed up as a free agent, meaning I just said, hey, I wanna play, put me on a team. And I met a really cool set of friends that way. So yes, that's an option. You can do some sports here at a non-competitive level. Um, we also are um, a Pac-12 team. So um, we have the Arizona Sun Devils football team um, and a variety of other sports um, and things. If you're interested in playing a Pac-12 sport, um, you actually have to connect with the coaches and the teams independently, you can't work through the admissions teams or recruitment teams at any university because there are Pac-12 policies and rules in place for that. Um, but you can find about all of our sports teams and things just by Googling ASU sports um, and that website will pull up for you. Um, the next question that's in here is about scholarships or how students can um, earn funds for school. So Nina did go over the scholarships information um, that's offered by Fulton. There's also a variety of on-campus jobs available for students. ASU is a student portal um, where students can, can go in and see what jobs are available um, that are hourly um, or work study positions. And then on top of that, there's a variety of stipend paid positions where you get like a lump sum um, for work done either in a research lab or for being a mentor or an assistant in a course um, or a grader in a course. Um, we also have um, community assistants and peer mentors who live in our residential communities like Tooker and Century that Nina mentioned. Um, and those students, their room and board can be covered by the different positions. Um, so it's a nice option for students. Um, we also have a question about uh, SAT scores needed um, for admission or if certain programs are harder to, to get into than others. Um, and so when Nina showed that chart that has all of our schools of engineering on it um, and all of our degrees, um, our different programs have different uh, requirements for admission. Um, so ASU has a base level of admission requirements. Um, and then on top of that programs at ASU will have, some of them will have additional requirements for admission. Um, many of our programs in Fulton um, do have higher admission criteria. That's a series of or statements. So a test score or GPA or top 25% of your class. Um, I believe the SAT score is generally a 1210 SAT. Um, but uh, you want to make sure that you pay attention to those. So Nina dropped that link into the chat for you. Um, as long as you meet those admission requirements, we have direct admission into the program. So there's no wait list. There's no pre-engineering. Um, as long as you meet our admission criteria, um, when you apply to ASU, you're directly admitted into the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Um, there is no supplemental application for the majority of our programs. Um, the only one that has a secondary app would be professional flight. Um, where students are able to get their flight certification. Um, and that secondary application has to do with FAAA requirements and medical. Um, so that's the only separate application. And then if you're looking at ASU as a whole, Nina did mention Barrett and they have a separate application. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we answered those. There's one more. What extracurricular activities would help me most in high school? would help me most if I want to be an engineer. Lego. <laughs> we run the Lego programs um, for Arizona out of our office. So we're definitely big. Lego or Vex Robotics is another one. Um, you don't have to have a baseline knowledge of engineering and technology. When you start at ASU, we'll do that for you. Um, what we really encourage students to do um, is to be calc ready, which means to have taken pre-calculus um, algebra two trig, those courses before coming to ASU. Um, engineering is heavily based on calculus and physics. 
Um, so students are more likely to be successful and retain in our programs and stay in those engineering disciplines if you um, have taken those calcul pre-calculus class before you come. Um, and then being familiar with the sciences. So if you're in high school and you can take physics, biology, chemistry, um, environmental science, any of those classes, if you're able to take those while you're in high school um, or be involved in student organizations and clubs that focus on those concepts and themes, um, it will help you once you get to college and you're in a STEM discipline like engineering or computer science, because um, you'll already be familiar with that content and those materials. Um, but we have over a thousand student organizations at ASU um, for students to join, everything from the Harry Potter Club, um, Quidditch team, to um, Society of, Ro of Women Engineers, our robotics teams. We have Formula One teams that build and race cars. Um, we have rocketry teams that build rockets and race them. Um, so there's a lot of different options for you to join. Um, it's more about finding your interests and then figuring out how you can connect engineering and tech to those interests. And one of the things I put in the chat as well um, is our summer engineering experience website. So I mentioned that summer camp where you would be invited to live on campus for a week and explore all of the different engineering programs. We'll be releasing information about this next summer's camp in February. So do keep an eye on um, that website if you do wanna do something this summer um, to tell, help kind of get exposed a little bit more to what engineering um, is like and what's there to offer for you. So there's a question about math <laughs> and um, if you need to be exceptional at math and science, if you wanna be an engineer. So you don't have to be exceptional in math or science, but you do have to be able to make it through four years of math. Engineering is based in calculus principles. So if you're wanting a true engineering degree, so you wanna be an aerospace engineer or a mechanical engineer, um, you want to be a computer scientist, which has six straight semesters of math courses embedded in it. You have to be able to take math courses and do well in them because you have to maintain your GPA. Um, you have to earn a certain grade to pass the course. And then the next course you're going to take is going to build on those principles that you learned in the previous course. Everything that you will do in an engineering and tech undergraduate degree is going to build Every course builds on the next course, semester to semester, year to year, and they all are laying a foundation for you of content knowledge that you will apply and whatever you choose to do post-graduation. So if you want to be an engineer when you graduate, you want to go work for NASA or SpaceX, you have to pass all those courses first. You have to pass the math um, and understand how to apply those principles into the engineering concepts. So you don't have to love it, but you have to be able to live with it is kind of what we say. So we know students that are engineers don't like math, but they're able to live with it. They're able to succeed in the classes. Um, there's a lot of other things and other programs that are in those engineering fields that are just not engineering um, disciplines. It's not a BSE in engineering. So there's engineering management where you learn management concepts as well as engineering concepts together. It's not as heavy math or physics. Um, as some of the other programs. Um, there's a lot of programs in the computing fields that you can look at, like information technology, um, informatics. There's a lot of different things you can, can look into um, and try and find your right fit. That's what the beauty of ASU is, is we have over 400 disciplines across our university. Um, so our students are able to explore and learn what the right fit for them is, what the right program um, and career path for them is. Um, and so the things that Nina has talked about, like the major maps and the degree videos, the summer engineering experience program, those are great ways to figure out if engineering and tech are the right fit for you because um, they're definitely challenging programs. Um, so you want to make sure you understand what those are before you start them. Well, and it's also important to note that um, tutoring is, is really a wonderful resource at the collegiate level. So a lot of times high school students think there's a stigma against tutoring, that you only go to tutoring if you just don't get it. 
But at the collegiate level, especially engineering, is that it's really expected that you go to tutoring. It's expected that you're going to struggle a little bit because these are challenging courses. Um, so that, that tutoring center is there to help you. So whether you um, struggle with math a little bit or physics or whatever the discipline might be, know that there's support, there's resources for you. Um, we want you to succeed and we're there to help kind of support you along the way. Um, so I'd say you don't have to be like Kaylee mentioned, you don't have to be exceptional, but you do need to know the importance of it and be able to make your way through it. I see that we had a question about our summer camp. Excellent. Okay, so our C at ASU summer camp, um, it's open to students across the country. So we will be releasing more information in February, but we're anticipating opening two camps, um, likely in like late June, July timeframe. Um, the camps are going to be first come first serve. So we're anticipating um, 50 or 60 students at camp. Um, and so there will be a GPA requirement of a 2.75, just so that um, we're getting the students that are really committed and strongly considering engineering as a path. So all of that will be outlined on our website. The way you see the website currently is the virtual iteration of our summer camp. Um, so we did run C at ASU virtually that last two years, but we are anticipating bringing it back in person this next summer. Um, so do keep an eye. If you are strongly considering it, keep an eye on that website for more details as they come in February. But I'm also um, going to be helping run that camp. So if you have questions for me, um, you're absolutely welcome to reach out to me too, and I can help answer those for you. Oh, great. Okay. So how can I encourage my students to pursue engineering? I teach middle school. That is a great question. So I myself was a teacher prior to coming to ASU. And so I think um, you as teachers have a lot of power to inspire um, it's kind of the next wave of engineering students. So in my personal opinion, ways to encourage students to get into engineering is to um, explore that it's very broad that you can you can join engineering from a lot of different perspectives. So um, students that are interested in in more hands on like tinkering, mechanical engineering might be a good fit for them. Um, so inspiring them to learn more, explore our website. The degree videos we mentioned are are widely accessible, and I would say good for a middle school level as well. So just to share with them what opportunities um, are out there. And um, we do offer our summer camps as well for our younger grades, like the middle school. So more information will be in February as well, kind of like our summer engineering experience for high school students. Um, but that, that's a wonderful question. Good, other questions? Well, as we're waiting for other questions to um, roll in, I just want to reiterate that we're really excited to share with you some opportunities related to engineering and technology here at ASU. So you have quite a lot of choice if you come to ASU to find that major that fits well for you. And all of those resources are readily available on our website. So as teachers, feel free to share that out with your students. Um, students, feel free to poke around and explore. We have cultivated over the last year and a half a lot of recorded uh, material from faculty, from um, student organizations. There's a lot on our website that you can explore. Um, for example, if you're considering maybe materials science and engineering, we ran a winter event last year called Holiday Cheer with an engineer that's recorded and on our website um, that looks at the materials level of some common holiday items like um, artificial snow and LED light bulbs. So that, there's a lot of resources out there as far as like recorded um, material to share out as well. I haven't seen any new questions pop in yet, but one that I would ask is, you know, what, what do you think is the best part about being an engineer and how, you know, how can students kind of change the world through engineering? That is an excellent question. So in my opinion, engineers are doers. So they have, I mean, as an engineer, you're going to understand and have a, a deep skill set, math, 
science, physics, you're going to have all those skills. But engineering is really where the rubber meets the road, that you're going to take the concepts and the skills that you've developed in math and science and apply them. Like you, you have the power and the knowledge to impact some real change. I mean, thinking about um, like our School of Sustainable Engineering in the built environment, for example. Um, environmental engineering is a really critical field in which um, students are exploring some of the environmental challenges like, um, wa uh, like water treatment, air, air purification. So those are some fields that obviously need, have a high demand. And so students can get into those programs and enact some real change on an environmental level. Um, going to biomedical engineering, that is an increasingly uh, important field. So working on medical devices or new medical technologies that can assist um, anyone from someone that has suffered from a stroke to someone that perhaps has lost a limb and needs a robotic um, kind of replacement or an artificial replacement, you name it. There, there's a lot of ways in which engineers can really impact the future. It's just a matter of finding which area motivates you the most, which area inspires you the most, which is why we encourage students to think, how do they want to change the world and then backtrack and figure out which engineering fits well with that. I really like that you said that because, you know, in some of the other Discover, Discovery Festival exhibits we've had, we have gotten that question of, you know, there's so many types of engineering. How do I narrow those down? Um, so I really loved the way that you explained that because I think that makes it a lot easier and makes a lot more sense than what you normally hear in response to that question. Oh, good. Well, and, and kind of going with that, there are um, some of the more common engineering disciplines that are very widely applicable across a number of um, different companies, different agencies, different disciplines. Um, so for example, electrical engineering and mechanical engineering are widely transferable. So you can be an electrical engineer that works on biomedical devices. You can be an electrical engineer that works for Intel. And so for students that are maybe not quite sure where they want to let land um, or end up, those are good, good programs to consider first because they give you the, a very kind of traditional engineering experience that has wide implications for it. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And um, let's see. So I'm not seeing any more questions in the chats, um, but do either of you have any last thoughts, words of wisdom to our teachers and students? Kaylee, I'll let you go first. No, nope, I would just say if you're interested in learning more about engineering um, or ESU, feel free to reach out. Um, we did provide um, the brochure as well that has all of the program information and all the links for everything that we talked about. Um, and then if you would like to receive a nice present in the mail um, from our team and ASU, um, you can go ahead and fill out that worksheet and then email it in. Um, we're known for our swags and our gift gifts that we send out. So um, you can check the mail for that and we'll send it out to you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you this afternoon. So if anyone has other questions after today is over, don't be shy, we're here to help. Have a great rest of your week. Awesome. Thank you both so much. And thank you to ASU for partnering with us on Discovery Festival. We appreciate you guys so much. And we're so excited about all the questions that were asked and all the information you shared. So thank you so much for being a resource for us and just supporting Big Brothers Big Sisters. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Good luck with the rest of the festival. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Have a now I'll share a short presentation just thanking all of our sponsors at Discovery Festival. I hope you all have a wonderful day.